<clears throat> Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Callwood, Joel Sings. Um, I have not done a recording in a while, and I know you guys are probably wanting, wanting one. Um, it's not that I don't have stuff to talk about or stuff to review. I definitely do. Um, as you guys know, I'm a fan fiction writer. I have a blog, um, which is lo 3 boys uh, one dot blogspot dot com and I have a number of stories up there and I want to just talk about those stories today and I rarely talk about my own stories and it's something I don't really get to do too much other than just write about them um, so I'm going to take the time to do it here I will be doing um, I will be continuing my revisit tour of John Philip Bentoncourt's blog. I'm going to do other read-alongs as well. Um, I'm also going to, you know, be reviewing his Return of Dark Shadows blog when it returns March 9th. So I'm excited about that. But I want to talk about stuff I've been working on for some time now. And before I get started, I just want to thank everybody who has viewed... Uh, my dark, my original dark shadows with Kiki Collins and people who have enjoyed that. Um, that is coming back this fall. Um, obviously, if you've been following along, you know the story. If you haven't, the story centers around one Kiki Collins, an 18-year-old uh, graduate who graduates from high school, and she goes to Paris with her boyfriend Connor Conway, and. She has been researching the Collins family history ever since she was a small child. And when she goes to Paris, she goes in search of a descendant of Quentin Collins originally. And she finds not just the original Quentin, but the original Barnabas. And, you know, they've been there for a long, long time, ever since the 70s. And that's where my story started. Um, it's still morning. Uh, coffee's good um, that's where that started and I just took her on one hell of a journey um, she not only met Barnabas and Quentin um, she nearly she did get engaged but her boyfriend got killed Con I killed I had Connor killed Connor Conway um, fictional character obviously these are all fictional characters and I've really enjoyed the journey. I've been working on this Dark Shadow story for over a year now. And when I bring it back this fall, it'll officially be my longest story. Um, it'll surpass a story I had wrote a while back ago entitled Space Marshal Mickey. Space Marshal Mickey was a very long story, and I worked on that vigorously. Um, so this will be my official, my longest story I've ever written, um, which is a lot of fun. You know, when you've put this much into a story, it, it means something to you. And certainly Kiki's story does and the story of her family does, the Collins family. Um, another story I had wrote was the Dark Shadows revival story. But before I touch on that, I do want to talk about a crossover I did that it was seemingly very popular it got over 300 views on blogger and people just seemed to love it which was the dark shadows halloween crossover and you know the one thing writing i don't want writing to feel like is work writing to me is a lot of fun and that's what writing should be it's creative fun you know to me if i'm not having fun with the story i'm not i'm not doing it um that's just how i feel as a writer, um, is is my what is my writing style? <laughs> and I was when I interviewed John Philip Bentoncourt, he had I think he had asked me that, and I said it, it's my writing is a lot like I feel like it's incomplete tic tac toe, X X, and I don't get the final X, uh, two O's, I don't get the final. And what I mean by that is, I never I I as a writer always feel I don't give enough. But in some, I know my wife just shakes her head at me. She goes, you give a lot of information about your characters. At least you try to throughout the process. And I do. It's just how I feel as a writer. It's sometimes I wish 
there's things I would do. I can't specific specify what um, exactly, but this is how I feel about it. But I enjoy it though. It's not something that I stress about doing. Um, don't worry, this is going on bit shoot too. Um, what what was the logic behind the crossover? Um, real simple. I had just was sitting there as I was wrapping up Kiki, and I had not written one word of the revival yet. I hadn't. I was just thinking about doing the revival, um, writing Dark Shadows revival. And as I was ending Kiki, I was literally getting ready to end where Kiki. The it was day one. It was part day one of Avenger. As I was wrapping up day one of Avenger and getting into day two of it. Um, I literally just asked myself, I wonder what the hell John Tate's been up to. And John Tate is the son of Laurie Strode. Um, and that's something that just had entered my mind. Um, and I'm thinking, well, what if John Tate never stopped running for Michael Myers after his mother's death? I mean, he would literally... He would just keep running. Maybe he would try to live a normal life, and that would probably blow up in his face um, when Michael would come for him. So the events of Hell on Halloween Night take place with John Tate. He's driving along towards the east. He's driving in snow, and I really wanted a snow setting for a Halloween story. It's a lot. A lot of the reason I'm doing Ghost of Haddonfield is I want another snow setting for Halloween. We don't see a lot of cold, harsh weather in these Halloween movies. We get the feel of cold. We get the idea that it's fall. They do always present that very well in a lot of these Halloween movies. Uh, my favorite fall feeling is not just one. Uh, part six has a lot of good just fall feel to it. I love six for that. F six is probably my favorite fall feel movie. It feels like fall. It's screen. Fall is just in your face. And I love it for that. Um, but I love, I'm from the East. I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, and my wife, uh, grew up in the mountains is, and that's, grew up in the mountains and that's where we live. So, and you know, being in the mountains, it's all it's in the winter, it's cold, it's it's snow. And I really wanted that snow setting for the east, especially for the state of Maine. And I thought, okay, what if John Tate's driving along in the snow storm? He's never driven in the snow, and he hits a patch of ice and he wrecks. Where is he wrecking? Okay, it's not why did he wreck here. It's why, where did he wreck, right? He crashes. His nose is a little uh, boogered up. His car is totaled. He's got to walk. So he starts walking in the direction his car was going. And he comes to the sign. And the sign that popped into my head was Collins Port, Maine. And I, I just thought, oh, God. Here's my crossover. <laughs> And that's how that, it, it, it all took place. It's funny, Dan Curtis dreamed about Vic, Victoria Winters. I dreamt that sequence of Hell on Halloween Night. And I shit you not, that was a lot of fun to dream that. I didn't think of that. I just dreamed it because I, I did ask, well, what's John Tate doing? I just dreamed about John Tate driving in the goddamn snow. And then the dream included the sign of Collinsport. And then the rest just came to me about what to do and how to do it. Um, I enjoyed writing Barnabas and Michael together. That was a lot of fun. I think anytime you throw a vampire and a serial killer together, especially Michael Myers, you're going to have fun. Um, I just enjoyed the hell out of it. I enjoyed writing it, and it was a lot of fun. And as after that, I would really gotten into the revival hot and heavy. And... Um, I dived head first right into it. And the one thing I wanted to do with the revival, you know, I knew how similar the revival was at times with 
the 60s show, I really wanted to open this up. I wanted this to be so different. I really wanted people to look at the revival and go, God, this is not Dan Curtis's 60s gothic soap opera. At least by the end of it, this is something so different. And that's something I wanted. But I had to get it to there. I couldn't just make it happen. And the one thing I wanted to do was... I remember the end of the revival, Victoria Winters waking up in the future, and they don't really, ex they just sort of, by the end in the, re in the revival, they sort of do a similar turn where a voice is speaking to Victoria Winters, and it's the uh, voice of Peter Bradford or whatever, and I'll find you, I'll find you. And I didn't want none of that. I, I thought that was so fucking hokey for a 90s show. I wanted something, I wanted to, to introduce a character that had not been introduced before. And a fellow YouTuber, a friend of mine, Darnell Weeks, he's very talented. Uh, shout out to him. He has a very unique voice and a very talented voice. And I remember writing the character of Derek Thompson and I didn't have somebody. And then I heard his voice. I'm thinking... That's Derek Thompson. That's, you know, that's who I want. And we had started talking by that point, and I'd asked him, I said, Would you, could I use your image for Derek Thompson? And he asked me who he was and stuff, and I told him. And he said, yeah, sure. And I asked him the same thing for this character for Dark Shadows, which was the Guardian of Time. And I explained to him what the Guardian did and everything. And Because the one thing I don't want someone to do is say yes and then think that, you know, I'm not doing nothing with this character. There is some purpose to each character. I try to do something with every character in my story. They're try I try to have a purpose. And that's just the way I write. You know, that's just who I am. And, uh... I... So, I brought forth this Guardian of Time... And, you know, the Guardian of Time was more like a warning to Barnabas and them because of Victoria Winters. Not only going back in time, but being brought back. He, The Guardian brought her back, but the Guardian came back with her to, to warn Barnabas. I have to get Angelique because she's going to change things as long as she's here. And I figured, what if Angelique changed things so much, you know, it altered a lot of things already you've already had deaths she's already been there long enough to do damage and then you threw a, i threw in a warlock and his sister and they were they were guarding these artifacts and lo and behold quentin collins was somebody who was looking for these artifacts and he was their enemy and so was the phoenix the phoenix was an enemy of theirs but the phoenix also wanted her son laura wanted david and i thought well what if the phoenix came from space and then left. She left with David. Quentin finds the wizard's ships. They're not from Earth. They're aliens. And he leaves in their ship with Ryu's sister. Ryu's dead, obviously. And I thought, man, what fun would it be to write the city of Atlantis in here? In here? Um, and with Merlin and just do a lot of fun things. What if Victoria was Merlin's daughter? And that just, that, I just threw that in there. And that's just a lot of fun and madness. I think if you don't have fun with something, if you're just so to the point of uptight with it, you're not going to have fun. You're not going to, you know, be free and create. And I think that's the one thing I try to do is create, you know, something that's, these peers, people curious enough, what the hell is going on here? And... Heist of Haddonfield, I was actually r wrapping that up as I was wrapping this up at the same time, and I pretty much dropped both at the same time. So, and then no, when I did Heist of Haddonfield, what I wanted to do is exactly what I did. Take these two thieves who were very good at stealing, and they were getting a tip about a bank heist from another thief who had been living in the town of Haddonfield, who had been hired by this blind shop candy shopkeeper 
Um, and they did both. They all three start working at the candy shop because it's directly across from the bank. Uh, the town has sort of covered up the fact of Michael Myers, um, which was a lot of fun to do. It was really easy to do too. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed writing that. And as soon as I got done doing that, I had started writing Kiki again. I had started writing The Collins Family. And one thing I wanted to do was I really wanted to turn Kiki into a vampire. Um, that's something I really wanted to do. And But I did want to sort of not just depend on her. I felt if I had just taken the road of well, let's take Kiki, turn her into a vampire, and have her continue her story that way. I wanted her to continue her story, but I wanted other characters to be part of this story in a much, much larger scale. And I introduced Devin Hartz, who has a hand of Potofi. I introduced Tate Stone, who is actually um, Charles Delaware Tate. I threw, I did throw Victoria Winters in there, and I had no real plan. And then, what came to me as I wrote her in, and I want to give a shout out because now he didn't give me the idea, but he made me think of the idea. Me and John Philip Betancourt, who is the Return of Dark Shadows, we were talking, and he had said something about a pirate ship. He goes, could you imagine, like, uh, uh, you know, how how did Naomi get those jewels? What who who gave them to her? And when he said that, I'm thinking, well, really, you know, you could say whatever the fuck you wanted, uh, and you can really. Who did give her those jewels? Well, the one thing I've always looked at Naomi and like, this woman was the first mistress. Keyword: mistress of Collinwood. Why was she the first mistress? What made her the first mistress? Well, what if this woman didn't receive the jewels? What if she wasn't handed to them by a pirate? What if she was a pirate herself and she fucking stole them? Um, she was as bloody as cutthroat as could be. And that's something I haven't got across yet, and I do, I will get across this fall. But, spoiler alert, right? Um... I am going to have so much fun with Captain Rose coming back. Um, and, and Violet is the embodiment of Rose in many ways. Um, look, just the look of her. She looks like Captain Rose, like a young Naomi. And that's something I really wanted to do. I wanted to make Naomi Collins a pirate, but not just any pirate. I thought, what if... Naomi Collins is the reason Widow's Hill is called Widow's Hill. We always assume it's the Widows. It's it's the Widows jumped off, right? Well, I changed that in many ways. I added something to that, I should say. I took no, Naomi, and I didn't just name her Naomi. I named her Rosalina Naomi Hanscom, and she was called Captain Rose, and she was the captain of a ship called the Widow Maker. And by a legend, the Widowmaker crashed beneath the rocks of a large cliff. And they named that giant cliff Widow's Hill because it was the only thing that could take down the Widowmaker. So Widowmaker, therefore Widow's Hill. And the last thing Naomi uh, Rosalina had said apparently was, my sea is the my grave is the sea. The sea is my grave. And that's something that the legend, the uh, Widows had said. Well, where did the widows honestly get that? Um, did they get that from a sailor? They would have most likely got it from somebody who was who was literally either drowning or willing to drown, right? So, why not a pirate? Why not the legend of Rosalina, the legend of Captain Rose? And it emerged, and who did she steal these jewels from? And I really wanted to use the most legendary pirate of all, Edward Edward Teach, Edward Thatcher, which was Blackbeard. So I introduced Blackbeard into this equation. Um, why not, right? So that is what I have been up to. Um, I just, I had wrapped up my Dark Shadow story, and I won't be bringing that back till the fall, but I am currently doing 
a 31-day Halloween blog, which centers around young Maxwell Dugan, who has the ability to see ghosts due to his mother. His mother's family could see ghosts, and because he is his mother's son, he can too. And there's things Max has not said about the dead, and I don't really want to give them away because it would be no fun. Um, so that's what I've been up to, and I don't want to think you guys will think that I'm not going to come on here and do videos. I did want to update you, and that's what this video is. This is an updated video of what I've been up to. Um, I've just been um, drilling away at this, really. Um, I have not stopped writing too much, really. I did two days off, and that was it. And I wrote until about 1.30 last night. Excuse me, went to bed and woke up this morning and wrote somewhat, uh, part of day four. And I figured, you know what, I better do an update. I just have not kept you guys in the loop for a while. Um, I'm going to try to finish writing day four by, by Thursday. And so I'm going to do a lot of writing tonight and tomorrow and throughout the day and then by this Friday I'm going to do some reviews I'm going to do a read along review and I'm going to give my thoughts on some franchises The Predator is going to be my first first stop um, and really I, I do want to talk about the whole Silent Hill thing and how I feel about that and I'll do that all Friday, but I Thank you guys for bearing with me. I thank you guys for sticking with me on the channel on BitChute on Twitter. I just want to thank everybody who's been following me um, Thank you to everybody who has supported me from the beginning my wife Jolie number one who's just been my biggest supporter Number two, a friend, good friend of mine, Darnell Weeks, Myers fan, who we had a conversation once, and he said, do not stop writing. You know, that is your forte. And he's right, and I want to thank him so very, very much. I'm going to tag him in this. He has um, been a big supporter of mine. I want to just thank him so very, very much. His friendship means a lot, and I want to thank him a lot. Um, very, very nice dude. Um and I just want to thank him immensely. Thank you, thank you, my friend, very, very much. Um, I want to thank uh, Daniel Culver, John Philip Bentoncourt, uh, at I under slash Barnabas Mark. Shout out. <laughs> Definitely to you, dude. Um, thank you to everybody who is, who is supporting this channel. I do want to give Dark Shadows updates, and I'm going to try to. Just please be patient with me. I am really, really in the middle of this Halloween blog thing. And it's just, it's taken on a life of its own, really, in many, many ways. Um, I can't say enough, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of what to say, really. I just, I'm talking straight from the heart. And the one thing I want you guys to do is have fun with me and come on these journeys with me when I write. And I hope you're enjoying uh, Ghost of Haddonfield so far. I've got two days up. Um, they're on my blog page. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. Um, that's what I've been up to. If you have any questions about any of the stories I wrote, um, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Colin Woodhove. Um, Joel T. Sands on Facebook. Let's see, where else, where else, where else? I can't think of... <laughs> resident of Collinwood YouTube, resident under slash of under slash Collinwood for bit shoot. Thank you guys so, so very much.